is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We're back with another episode of Quick Hits. Uh, we are going to be breaking down yet another fight. Earlier today, we did our first show on the Ruiz versus Ariola fight. Now we're doing the second show on the other big fight, the bigger fight, the mega fight that was announced between Josh Taylor and uh, JC Ramirez for the undisputed supremacy at 140 pounds, all four belts on the line. On May 22nd, uh, between Taylor and Ramirez. Uh, but before we get to that, please like and subscribe, share in all forms of social media. Remember, quick hits comes at you twice a day. Uh, just two two episodes a day, every day, Monday through Saturday. And then once a day on Sunday, just eight to ten minutes to keep you up on the latest boxing news uh, from around the world. Um, so please like and subscribe, share in all forms of social media, hit the bell icon, hit the thumbs up button. And let's get to it. Uh, like I said, on May 22nd, we are going to have an undisputed uh, junior welterweight champion, uh, either Josh Taylor of Scotland or uh, J.C. Ramirez of uh, Fresno, California. Um, and so, first off, this is going to be a good fight. It's a hot, entertaining fight. Uh, you got Josh Taylor, who's a long-range sniper, who can also fight on the inside, and he showed that he can fight on the inside in pro grade. He had his best moments. Um, against Pro Gray on the inside, which was not what we were expecting. And and Ramirez, who is a come forward pressure fighter, uh, fundamentally sound, good footwork, surprisingly good speed that he showed in the hooker fight. Uh, good pop. Um, he's going to have to fight, win the fight on the inside. Um, look, it's an entertaining fight. It's a good fight. There's no question about it, right? It's not a pay view. It's on ESPN, so that's great news. I don't have to pay for this fight. I get it for free. It's a mega fight. It's a great fight. It's kind of a 50 50 ish kind of fight, although I think Taylor will be a slight betting favorite, um, you know, going into the ring. Um, there's nothing I don't like about this fight. You got two prime 140 pounders, uh, the two best guys in their weight class in their prime fighting each other for undisputed supremacy in the division. Nothing I dislike about it, right? Uh, I'm leaning towards Josh Taylor. I think Taylor has more paths to victory. I think he's the better. He's obviously the longer boxer. I think he's the bigger, stronger boxer. He can win from the outside. Um, and on the inside, he showed that he can do a lot of good work. Like I said, against Progre, he had his best moments on the inside. So he can he can win the fight on the inside or the outside, where, as Ramirez has to get on the inside. And he was able to do that against a big, long guy like Hooker. So he can do it. Here's, here's the problem, though. Taylor is a lot sharper. Uh, he, Taylor doesn't have the defensive flaws that Hooker does, right? So he may be able to get inside time and, you know, at times with Taylor, but he's not going to be able to do it consistently like Hooker. I don't think he's going to catch Taylor when it makes shots like he did Hooker. So, yes, you could say he can get on the inside, and that's a fair argument. He did it with Hooker. But this is not Hooker. He's a sharper. Taylor's a sharper, ver, a sharper version. A, a more defensively sound, more mechanically sound, fundamentally more textbook fighter than is Hooker. So I, I think that Taylor does as good of work as Hooker did on the outside. And that fight, Hooker did good work. And I think he holds his own on the inside better than Hooker did and doesn't get hit with as much. So I'm leaning towards Taylor by close but unanimous decision. I think in a highly competitive, fun fight. Both these guys are always in fun fights. Um, Taylor has been inactive, really. He's fought just once. Um, in a lopsided fight against his mandatory then Kong Song, he knocked him out with a body shot. Uh, that's the only fight he's had since the program fight, so he's been inactive too. Um, Ramirez had that great fight with Postal last year, which a lot of people thought he lost, a very 50-50 kind of thing. Um, and, and Postal is a common opponent for both fighters. Um, if you remember Josh Taylor for it, Postal a few years back, uh, and, and Postal gave Taylor some trouble early, but Taylor was able to figure it out. He won the later rounds. Won a wide decision. Now, Postal gave Ramirez trouble throughout. All right, he, he he. There was no part of that night that was easy for Ramirez. Like a lot of people thought Ramirez lost. It was that close, right? Um, if you go through their resumes, that's Ramirez has that win. He has the Hooker win. He has 
Antonio Orozco. Um, he's got some good wins to pay it up, but a lot of them were close. Uh, not everyone is convinced that he won all those fights. Uh, Taylor's got you know wins over Ryan Martin, or Harry Davies, um, and, and of course Pro Gray and Kong Song. So their resumes are comparable. Taylor's is probably slightly better, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the winner, right? Do they stay at 140 and hope that Tiafimo Lopez comes up to fight them? Or do they go up to 147 and, and chase Terrence Crawford and the big money fights there? I think if it's Josh Taylor, because I think Taylor is naturally bigger. Um, I think he probably struggles to make 140 because he's is that big for the size. He's a big 140-pounder, carries around a lot of weight. I think he has to move up to 147. Like typically, like Crawford did, if somebody wins all four belts that unifies an intermediate division like this, they go up to the major division, which would be 147. And I, I think that's obviously the decision for Taylor because he's really big for the size. Now, Ramirez is a different story. Ramirez kind of fits in 140. Like, he might be a little small for 147 where Taylor won't be. So if Ramirez is in here and he makes – and he wins, which he could. I'm not picking it, but he could. I think he stays at 140 and, and hopes that Tia Fimo comes up and fights him. Or he stays and – Fights Regis Pro Gray. Um, he fights, I don't know, Omar Figueroa is making a comeback, right? Maybe Omar Figueroa picks up a win and he can fight him at 140. There are names, Robert Easter, uh, that he can fight at 140. I, I don't know. The big money fights are at 147, but he may be too small for that weight class. So we'll see. I, I think if Taylor wins, he obviously goes up to 147. I, I think if, if Ramirez wins, he probably stays at 140, tries to get a pro grade fight or a um, uh, a pro grade fight or, or, or um, a TFU Lopez fight. So TFU will come up. There's going to be options for him. None of them are as good as you know Crawford at 147. That, that, but again, Ramirez is probably small, too small for that weight class. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Who are you picking? Um, are you intrigued by the fight? Are you excited for the fight? Are you happy that's not on pay-per-view that you don't have to pay for? Because it? it is a great fight. Hopefully they put a good card together. This is a big moment for ESPN. This will be, you know, one of the biggest fights they have on free TV. So that's good. Um, let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Like and subscribe. Share on all forms of social media. Hit the bell icon. Hit the thumbs up. Again, Quick Hits comes at you twice a day. Eight to ten minutes uh, per show twice a day. Uh it is March 2nd, 2021. Ivan Calderon is still out in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Let's get that chance. Let's get the Iron Boy in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.